there, I'm Stacy, the encaustic mixed media artist behind Studio Stacy. Happy Monday. I thought I would do another weekly vlog coming at you this week. So um, today I am exporting a video back there on the computer. And while that is happening, I'm gonna turn on the wax, get it heated up and put some encaustic medium down on the gessoed papers with the water media down from a last week's vlog. If you missed that for some reason, I'll um, link it up here somewhere. So you can click on that and get caught up to this week. But anyways, back to this week, let's get some encaustic medium put down onto this paper and see how it holds up. And while that wax heats up, I will show you what happened over the weekend. It was a lovely weekend, a productive weekend, and a fun, adventurous weekend. We got outside, got into the snow with our cross-country skis. So um, let me play a couple clips from the weekend and, um, and then we'll get some wax put down. Happy Saturday. The sun is out. It is frosty and crispy and it seems like a great time to get outside. I don't know if you can see those tracks in the yard in and out of the woods. Those are all deer tracks. So I'll try to take you guys back there later today and show you some more close-ups, but pretty cool. nest up in this tree here. I don't know if you guys can see that in the video, but we have quite a few hawks around here. So I'm not sure if it's a hawk's nest or what, but um, the trees again, they're just beautiful and um, love getting outside and enjoying the weather here. And because it wouldn't be a Saturday without some mat shenanigans, here you guys go. Tastes like bunny. <laughs> Kind of deer. <laughs> Happy Sunday. Back up in the studio to organize, or rather, maybe finish organizing this big, huge mess. And yes, I am back to making plastic bags.
also decided to go ahead and use some plastic containers. However, they need a few modifications. custom storage yes please best husband ever Even though I really liked the look of the cigar boxes these plastic containers are definitely going to give me some more storage and room to grow with this paint so um, yeah there we have it the uh, final caustic paint storage as of right now and just like that most of the snow has melted you know what they say here in northeast ohio wait a day or just even 10 minutes if you don't like the weather because it's going to change at any rate it was a beautiful weekend and a lovely way to end the weekend is with some homemade pizzas. And now back to Monday. I just realized I didn't have any just plain old paper with just the case and the two case and gessos, the chalk gesso and the regular plain old case and gesso. So I'm gonna apply a couple layers of just plain gesso to some mixed media paper and some watercolor paper in both of these two different kinds of gesso and then tomorrow I'll probably put wax on it but um, I just realized I, I want to make sure I have just plain gesso down um, just so I can see how that would also work with the encaustic medium so that's the first plan all right what I think I want to do next is cut apart those um, papers back there into different sections and then I'm going to put some encaustic medium down glue portions into the sketchbook, take a bunch of notes, all of that stuff. But that magic that's happening outside of the window, I don't know if you can see, you probably can't see at the moment. So I'm actually gonna flip the camera around and I'll show you that. So it's just too pretty, way too pretty. All right, I found my first problem with gluing these really heavy, thick pieces down. And that is, it, you have to pick and choose where you write on the next page. So I wrote up here and it wasn't a big deal. But if this big, huge, you know, if this was taking up the whole page, that could have been a little bit problematic to write onto this sketchbook. But um, it's working out so far, so. And a completely different side note. Um, does anybody else do this? Like I've literally piled the trash here instead of right there, right where the trash can is. Why I decided to pile it up in here and not just put it right into the trash can, I have no idea. I apparently get into the zone when in creating and can't be bothered with things like trash. The encaustic medium is now heated up and melted down so I'm just going to be heating up these papers lightly with the heat gun to make sure they're not real cold before I put the medium down on it 
and of course I'm using the heat gun and not the torch so I don't catch anything on fire. I'm also double checking as I swipe along this gesso and water media that nothing's coming off on the brush because I don't want to contaminate the encaustic medium by dipping it back in if anything's coming off. And nothing is, so that's a good sign. I have these, I call them hockey pucks here, but they're actually called bench cookie. <laughs> I don't know, I got them at the hardware store. But at any rate, I sometimes use them to prop up wood panels, not prop them up, but to get them up off of the surface. And I'm gonna try that with the paper, see how it works. It just allows the paper to cool a bit, a little bit quicker. Um, so you can start putting another layer of the encaustic medium down. So I don't know how they're going to work, but I'm going to try them. I just wanted to make one more note um, here or one more thought here. The I'm working with two pieces of paper and that allows one to cool off while I work on the other and they don't get ever too hot. The wax doesn't ever get too hot and really molten. Um, so, and I'm also, you'll see me from time to time kind of bending these papers. They curled up a bit when I put down the water media. So I'm just bending them around and making sure that they lay flat for when I put down the encaustic medium. Okay, I really could not tell a difference between any of those gessos as far as when I was putting down the encaustic medium. Um, I am gonna try, like I said, just a plain paper with just the gesso on to see if there's any difference there. I really don't think there's going to be, but um, that will be coming um, sometime later this week. So, but yeah, I really couldn't tell a difference between any of the gessos. So I've actually reached out to Sinopia to see if there's a reason why they recommend just the regular casein gesso over their absorbent chalk ground gesso. Um, maybe there's a reason that I am not aware of. So I've reached out to them, sent them an email. So if they get back to me, I will let you guys know. Here are the results. This is the chalk gesso, the chalk ground gesso with the encaustic medium on it. This is the casein gesso with the encaustic medium on it. And this is the RNF, which of course I know works because I, that's what I normally use. But um, I really could not tell the difference between any of them as far as going on when I was heating it up, any of that. So stay tuned. Okay, I got two responses from Sinopia within minutes. Uh, the manufacturer of this gesso. Highly recommending this company based on their response time. I'm still gonna continue to play with this gesso. Um, so, you know, I'll let you know more on my thoughts if I come up with any other um, downsides to that. But great, really quick response. And their response between the casein gesso and the chalk gesso for encaustic and why they recommend one over the other. Actually, they are recommending one over the other based on if you're using it on canvas. So for the rigid panels, which is all I'm using for encaustic, I'm not using any canvas, both of these gessos are equally as good. Um, so that answers that question. So if you prefer like a thicker um, consistency, this casein gesso is great. If you prefer the thinner consistency, then this chalk gesso is, I think, the way to go. Um, I think this will actually go farther and longer, if you will, because it's a thinner. I actually kind of prefer this over the thicker gesso. As of right now, like I said, I've hardly played around with this stuff. So. But anyway, I wanted to jump back on and let you guys know that because the response time was incredibly quick and um, just a really, so far, great company to um, work with and deal with. 
So um, I'm gonna let you guys go for the day and I will pick you back up in, I don't know, tomorrow or a couple days, next time I'm back in the studio, hopefully sooner than later. Hi there, it has been a few days since I've last picked you up. If you hear some clicking noises, I've got the um, griddles heated up back there and they tend to kind of click <laughs> when they're heating up. So um, that's what that noise is at any rate. I thought today I would experiment around with a new tool I got in the mail the other day. So I'm going to show you the new tool and we'll see how this works. Now I'm also using it with this tool, which is a heat temperature regulator. So I can turn the tool down and the wax won't smoke or become toxic. So um, just a word of advice. I just want to make sure that you know I'm also using it with this. Um, you do want to hook up anything electric that doesn't have a temperature gauge built into it where you can turn it down or up to something like this with encaustic. So again, the, the wax doesn't become smoking and toxic because that is no good. Okay, this tool came with several different tips and you can interchange the tips out of it fairly easily. Also came with like a little... Um, what do they call those set screw things? Um, Allen wrenches. That's what I'm looking for. Um, at any rate, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail with this tool. Sherry Bartlett is who I learned about this tool with and along with a lot of other encaustic writing tools. I'm highly recommending you go check out her website and her class. It was fantastic and it was not very expensive well worth it. So I'm going to put the link down below in the description box to that. And I'm not going to go into a ton of detail with this because I did not come up with this technique and I learned this te technique from Sherry. So go check that link out down below in the description if you want to know more. But in the meantime, here I am playing away with this new tool. It makes some teeny tiny little lines and is fantastic. So I've been messing around with this tool all afternoon and it is fun. You can get some amazing fine, fine lines with it. Um, so like I said, if you're interested in more information on this tool or making encaustic lines in general, go to the description box below and check out Sherry's um, class. It's really, really good not affiliated, not sponsored. I just think it's a great class. So at any rate, I think this is where I'm going to leave you for this video. I do hope you enjoyed coming along on this little vlog. Hope you enjoyed seeing our wonderful winter weather and coming along experimenting with the encaustic medium on that gesso and water media and of course this little encaustic writer. If you did, you know what to do. Give it a great big thumbs up. It really, really does help me out. If you aren't subscribed and would consider doing so, that would also help me out tremendously. Again, thanks so much for watching. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.